Everyone, of course, wants to do cool things with their data like AI or machine learning, or maybe just do some basic reporting instead of Excel sheets. But none of that is even possible unless you first have a way to access and use that data from an analytics perspective. And that is one of the foundational parts of data architecture known as data ingestion. This is something that in the past was extremely custom, extremely difficult to now something that's a little bit more plug and play, a little bit easier to do. So in this video, we're gonna talk about number one, what is data ingestion and why is it important? We'll talk about some example tools as well as some important things to consider as you decide what route you wanna take with your data ingestion. This is the area where we're extracting our raw data sources and loading it into a data lake or some sort of landing zone. Now, how it's implemented, or there are the batch options and the streaming options. So real-time, change data capture, stuff like that. Most commonly in the batch form of things, you're going to work with tools that have pre-built connectors to a lot of the common data sources. So it's pretty much plug and play to connect to your sources and load it into common destinations like a cloud database or a file storage. Alternatively, you might use a custom Python script that will extract and load. Regardless of the approach, that concept is what's known as data ingestion. Of course, this is helpful because it's going to allow you to consolidate all of that data into one location and start using it to make better decisions. Remember the three pillars of engineering, we're taking the sources and bringing it into that central hub. And this is kind of that way to make that happen. Some example tools here for the batch loading in particular are Fivetran, Stitch, and then Airbyte is an open source option that they also have a cloud provider, but you can host that open source. And I also just want to reiterate again, these are just a few examples, ones that I've worked with, but they're not by any means all of the options. For data streaming, you have some common options like Apache Kafka. You could do Amazon Kinesis and then Azure and Google Cloud obviously have their own versions. Debezium is a way to connect to databases and do a kind of a change data capture. And then custom Python scripts could also be created to extract and load your data. Really any possible type of source information could be applicable here. But this is where this is all taking place and is obviously a critical component of any modern data stack. Like a lot of these components, when it comes to data ingestion, there are a lot of different options you can pick from. You're going to see so many different tools and making a decision on that can be a little overwhelming. So here are a few things to consider when making that selection. Number one is connector availability. The first thing you're going to want to do is list out and get a clear picture of the sources you're working with. And when you do that, you'll be able to understand what are all of the different places you need to connect one of these tools to. And what you're going to find is a lot of times one isn't going to have all of the connectors you want. One may have most of them, but miss one or two important ones. So while it's unlikely you're going to find one that has every single one that you want, it is something you should definitely factor in to your decision on which one you end up using because you're going to have to kind of edge case around whatever decision you make there. Number two is performance. And this is highly dependent, again, on your sources and your destination and the rest of the architecture that you set up. But some of these will perform better than others. Some are going to have bugs along the way, and maybe some of the connectors change over time. So that causes errors. And so a lot of that is dependent on your setup, but it's something to keep in mind. And I recommend doing trial runs and proof of concepts to see which ones work consistently the best for you and your sources. And number three here is customization, which kind of aligns with number one, what level of customization do you need or do you want to have? because not all of your connectors will probably be available right out of the box. So for those other ones, you're probably going to have to customize it a bit. Some of these allows you to build your own custom connectors if that's what you want to do, or you could build custom connectors with just Python or find some other route around that. But the availability of customization, your desire to have to customize and what kind of support maybe the provider offers are all things to consider here when making that decision. As you can see, it's hard to have a good data architecture without first having that ingestion piece figured out, but it's really just one component of a much bigger process. And so whether you are somebody who needs to implement this for your team, maybe you're the leader of the team, or you just want to contribute at a higher level on different architectures to help you, I've put together a completely free modern data checklist. It goes over not only this, but other items that you should be aware of as you go about planning or building data architectures throughout your career or for your company. So again, if that's something you're interested in, completely free, there'll be a link below for that checklist. But with that said, let's now continue on with the video. The other item is strategies. And this has to do with when you're ingesting this data, what are you doing with it when it gets to that landing zone? And so here are just two things to think about as you do it. Number one are naming conventions. For example, you could prefix all of your data with the name of the source that it's coming from, or maybe you just remove the prefix and, and separate it by schema. Whatever you choose there, you want to be consistent and have an established naming convention rather than just taking what comes by default. This is going to be the first place that people internally start interacting with the data. So you want to set the precedent of things being clean and organized going forward that trickles down into the rest of the platform. And number two here is thinking about how you load this. So you're going to have different sources and then you'll probably have different tables within all of those sources. So when you load it, you want to think about 
What's your strategy for loading it? Two examples here, and this is focused mainly on if you're loading directly, let's say to a database, you would have either a separate database for just raw data, and then you have a separate database for your transform data. But in that raw database, you would break up each source into different schemas. So one source gets schema one, all the tables are in there. Source two gets another schema and their tables, and you can kind of structure it that way. Alternatively, if you just want to have one database for both raw data and transform data, you want to think about how it's visually going to look as people interact with it. And one trick here is that most databases will sort all the objects alphabetically. So if you're going to keep all of your raw data in the same database as your transform data, think about prefixing all of the ingested data a certain way so that they're grouped together and you can separate them and it'll make it much easier for you to work with. Hopefully those are some helpful tips and considerations for you as you make your decision with this really important component of a modern data stack.